Hanoi holds a very special place in my heart. But it didn't start out that way. Oh my word. Vietnamese drivers. I've never heard more uh, horns honking ever before. I mean, it's cold. I am shocked at how cold it is. Not in Thailand anymore. There are quite a few differences between Vietnam and Thailand, and it was actually kind of a culture shock. The languages are different. Vietnamese is actually much closer to the English alphabet. The traffic is crazy. The general rule seems to be, you stay on that side, I'll stay on this side, except for when I don't want to. And as I mentioned before, it's cold. I was not expecting it to be as cold as it was. I chose my Airbnb for its rustic charm and calm atmosphere. And for this cool bathtub and shower. This was the closest I felt to really living amongst the locals. I stayed in the picturesque old quarter, which is very walkable and has a lot of points of interest around the lake. I did my first excursion through the Get Your Guide app and booked a full day city tour. We started with the Chen Kua Pagoda, which is the oldest pagoda in the city at more than 1500 years old. Next, we went to the mausoleum where we saw Ho Chi Minh's embalmed body. Not high on my bucket list, but now I can say I've been there. Can you spot the tourist who's not prepared for the cold? Located nearby is the Presidential Palace, which stands out with its bright yellow mustard color and French colonial architecture. The most recent President Ho Chi Minh actually lived and worked in a traditional Vietnamese stilt house surrounded by nature. We made a quick stop at One Pillar Pagoda, then went on to the Temple of Literature. It would make sense that this temple has a scholastic name since it used to be a school, but it's actually after someone's last name. According to my Google Translator, I wrote, change it. This was my first time having a family-style meal. It was a bit awkward sharing food with a bunch of people I'd just met, but it actually was a really cool experience. There's something special about sharing a meal together that other cultures just get. Next, we visited a family-owned business where they make art using different mediums, including duck egg shells. It takes about three months to complete a piece because of all the layers of sanding and black lacquer that are needed to seal it and make it shiny. Getting towards the end of our trip, we explored the Vietnam Museum of Ethnology. We also got to see a lot of traditional style houses.
The water puppet show was probably my favorite part because it felt so authentic and definitely unique. Like I said, I found this full day excursion on the Get Your Guide app, which is linked below. I happened to arrive in Vietnam days before Tet or Chinese New Year, which is very big in Vietnam. So note to self, look up local holidays that may affect your travel plans while there. I'd read that Tet in Vietnam is as big as Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's all combined. Apparently, stores and restaurants shut down as well as most public transportation. So this put me in a bit of a panic right off the bat. Myself and other tourists flocked to the stores to stock up on stuff, not really knowing what to expect. It actually ended up being a great time to visit. There were a few bigger and touristy restaurants open, and the whole holiday reminded me a lot of Easter in America. All the families were dressed up and taking pictures. The women were wearing oh yai, the traditional Vietnamese dress. My Airbnb host even gave me a chum cake, a traditional cake eaten during Tet. It was all around a really cool experience that I'm glad I got to be a part of. My second big day trip was to Ninbin and the surrounding area. We explored Hoa Lu, one of the ancient capitals of Vietnam. Floated down the Ngo Dong River in a traditional riverboat through several caves. and climbed 500 stone steps to see all the way to Tam Kok. I stayed just over a week in Hanoi. Walking around the lake and Old Quarter became a regular pastime. And before I left, I had to check out two things. Hanoi is the birthplace of egg coffee, which was created out of necessity, but has become a frothy dessert-like coffee. The last thing on my list was Train Street where on a not-so-regular schedule, a train comes right down the middle of a very active street surrounded by little cafes. And as soon as someone sounds the alarm, you'd better get out of the way.
I met so many friends during this part of my trip, like Emma and Christian from Denmark, Lillian, Christy, and so many more. What started out as a cold, uninviting, and a bit frightening place easily turned into one of my favorite parts of the entire trip. This is how I describe Hanoi. It's like if New York City was family friendly and all about young couples, ice cream, and giant pig balloons. gonna miss Hanoi. Maybe not the traffic. It's very family oriented. When I think of Hanoi, I think of blue stools. From walking down in the morning and seeing 20 plus people pouring out the door, all sitting around on blue stools eating breakfast together, to groups of people sitting together chatting on the sidewalk. It's like these blue stools are a symbol of community. Hanoi, you will always hold a special place in my heart. I got really proud of myself for crossing the street. If you visit, just keep walking and make eye contact. Their job is to not hit you. <laughs> 